Hey everyone, Mr. Mase here. This is a guide for round one of the 2021 FA Manufacturer Season Stage 2 with the Group 4 cars. Let's get this started. First of all, apologies if you hear the sound of fireworks going off in the background as it's 4th of July night as I'm recording this, so there's going to be quite a few fireworks going off. But anyways, I'm in the Dodge Viper. Brake balance is at zero. You can also use plus one for a bit more rotation on time trial and qualifying. Bring yourself towards the right side of the track and your first braking point is in between the 100 and the 50 meter board. Brake hard for a short while and you want to bring yourself all the way to the left side of the track so you can set yourself up to go down the center S's. So right around here, this is where you want to start to fully accelerate and take full advantage of the curbs and stay on the left curb so the car can rotate a bit better. And just a quick note, when you go through the center S's in the race, you might need to do a little lift off of throttle so the car can rotate a bit more. Then stay on the right side of the track as you want to brake just as you pass the 100 meter board or just after you pass the marshal stand that is on the right. So you'll want to brake right around here before the path that is on the right. Brake hard for a short while. Slowly ease off of the brakes as you turn in, taking advantage of the curves and carefully accelerate your way out. Move over to the left side of the track and brake as you pass the 50 meter board or just as you pass the marshal stand that is on the left. So you want to break as you pass the 50 meter board, use some of your braking power, so you can still slow down as you're making way through the turn. Then look for this very specific tire mark, that is your next braking point. Brake hard for a short moment, ease off of the brakes as you turn in, taking full advantage of the curves. Then do a little bit of braking as you go through this left hairpin, then get on the throttle as soon as you can. Bring yourself towards the left and brake as you pass the black sign that is on the left. Brake hard for a short moment. Ease off of the brakes as you turn in. Get on the throttle as early as you can and take this left turn flat out. Finally, bring yourself towards the right and you want to brake just as the grass on the right turns from brown to green. Brake hard for a short while. Ease off of the brakes, getting on the throttle as early as you can. And you want to take this final left turn as smoothly as possible. And that is pretty much it for the lap guide. We'll finish up the lap and go ahead and take a look at the strategies. For the qualifying session, you only have five minutes to try to get a good qualifying time. So you'll have about two chances to try to get the best qualifying time possible. For those who have seen the Toyota Cup guide that I posted up a couple of days ago, it's very similar to that. The tire wear is still a bit of a problem, even though the tire wear is one multiplier down compared to the Super Cup race. So. The tire wear is a time six, so tire wear is still a pretty big problem. So you want to be easy on your tires on your outlap. That way you don't wear your tires out before you even start your qualifying lap. And unlike the super race, this race with the group four cars, slipstream is even more useful than ever because these cars are slower, so they benefit more from slipstream and the dirty air effects isn't as bad in these cars. So in the higher split races, slipstream qualifying is pretty much going to be a mandatory thing, especially through the main straight and the back straight after the Senna S. Speaking of Senna S, the last turn that we just went through where you break for the last time, that is one of the important turns that you want to nail down since it goes through the, through the main straight, obviously. The other turn that you want to nail down is the Senna S. If you mess up your entry into the Senna S's, which is where we're going through right now, you already lost a couple of tenths of a second and that's really going to negatively impact your qualifying time. And the third turn that you want to make sure that you nail down or focus on is going to be this left turn coming up. So this turn, turn four to see the logo, it's pretty important to make sure you nail down because this is one of those turns that's really easy to mess up and if you make even just a little mistake, you can easily lose a lot of time. So 
there's quite a couple turns that you want to make sure that you nail down. And from that qualifying session, I was able to get a 136.5, which is all right, but I know I can do better than that. And yeah, Slipstream, it can be very useful, but it is a double-edged sword because if you get too close to the car in front of you and you get held up by them, then you're only going to end up losing some time. So if you do decide to engage in Slipstream qualifying, do be aware that you need to position yourself just right when you're starting your qualifying lap so you don't get too close to them. And then you have to slow yourself down to not end up punting them. So at the end of the day, you only have two chances to try to get the best qualifying time possible. But I would suggest trying to get your best qualifying time on the first qualifying lap because tie wear, it's a pretty big problem. For this race, we are doing 18 laps at Interlagos with the group four cars. Fuel is a times two, so fuel is not an issue for this race, but tire wear is a times six, so tire wear is a pretty big issue. The racing soft and medium tires are provided for this race and both tires are required so you do have to make at least one pit stop to switch over to the tires that you haven't used yet. In terms of what tires to start on, it depends on where you're starting. So if you're starting in the very front, you can start on the racing soft tires to try to get away from everyone behind you. If you're starting in the middle or in the back, you can start on the racing medium tires to get the slower tire compounds out of the way. But do be aware that some people starting closer towards the front may start on the racing medium tires so that they can fuel burn a bit. So that when they switch on over to the racing soft tires, the car is a bit lighter, which helps them go a bit faster. And also with the lighter car, they can save a bit more tire life. So when to pit is entirely going to depend on your driving style and the car that you're using. So for example, TX3 Jack, who is in front with the Mazda Tensor Group 4, while the car is fast, the tire wear isn't that great because it is an all-wheel drive, so the front tires wear out pretty fast. So he's going to pit on over at the end of lap 7. And me in the Dodge Viper, my tire wear is, I mean, it's okay. Okay, ish it's not the best but i'm going to go for eight laps on the racing soft tires so skipping over to the end of lap eight i'm going to switch on over to the racing medium tires if your car is really good on the tires you can even potentially go nine laps on the racing soft tires once again how long to be on the racing soft tires it's going to depend on the car that you're using if you're in a front wheel drive Good luck because your tire wear is not going to be that good and you're going to really need to nurse those tires to try to make them last as long as possible. The pit loss is about 30 seconds. Yeah, it's that long. So if you're thinking about trying to do a two stop, it's sadly not going to work. So you're pretty much pitting around halfway into the race to switch on over to the tires that you haven't used yet. The other thing is that let's say you started on the racing soft tires, switch over to the racing medium tires early on, you do risk pitting out into traffic. So I pitted at the end of lap 8, Jack pitted at the end of lap 7, and we both pitted into traffic. So that is something that you do want to be careful of if you do decide to pit earlier than lap 9. You do risk pitting out into traffic, and if you get held up by those who haven't stopped yet, then you do risk losing quite a bit of time. So you pretty much want to make the racing soft tires last as long as possible. So you do want to try to drive as smoothly as possible, adjust the brake balance to try to even out the tire wear. And yeah, it's not going to be an easy thing depending on the car that you're in. So let's say if you're in a front wheel drive, nine laps on the racing soft tires is most likely not possible. But in a car like the Viper, it's probably possible to get nine laps out of the soft tires but that is asking for a bit much but if you're in a car that is really good on the tires then it is possible to get those nine laps out of these soft tires and once again just try to make sure that you have your brake balance at the right value so in my case i did have the brake balance at zero or even plus one for time trial and qualifying but those are just one lap paces in the race, I had the brake balance at plus three and plus four 
to try to save the front tire life because as you see right now the front tire life it's not looking that great and looking at the end of this race in my first stint which was the soft stint i went from 137s mid 137s to mid 138s before i pitted and then for the racing medium stint which is what you're seeing right now i went from high 137s to mid or even high 138 so you want to try to drive as smoothly as possible to try to retain the tire life because tire wear is a bit of a pain in the butt over here and from this race i was able to get a 30 minutes and four seconds so this race is a bit of a long one and there are a couple of manufacturer races that are going to be 30 or even 40 minutes long so this is going to be a bit of a long manufacturer season all right, so more fireworks are going off, so I'm going to try to quickly wrap up this video with places to overtake and the penalty serving zone. So the main straight is going to be one of the best places to try to get the overtake done, especially with the use of slipstream. So this main straight is long enough to where you can easily try to get a pass done. And you also want to make sure that you're able to break just a little bit earlier if you're under the slipstream because you're going faster so you need a longer braking zone and try not to overshoot into turn one as it's pretty easy to do that now after Kerber de Sol which is the left turn we just went through this is another overtaking spot and the penalty serving zone is hanging out right here that is the only penalty serving zone so it's possible to get another overtake done through the back straight and after that it's going to be a bit more situational so this right turn it is possible to go for an overtake but it's going to be very situational you're not going to see that many overtakes happen around that area and then for these twistier parts of the track you want to be a little careful because people can try to go for a dive bomb and yeah you want to be very careful about that be aware about what's going on behind you because if people are going to be going for a dive bomb you want to get ready for it and finally the final breaking zone for Junkao that is going to be the final spot to get the overtake done so this turn right here Junkao this is the last place to get the overtake done and it can be especially useful during the final laps but that is pretty much it for this guide hopefully the fireworks weren't too annoying and hopefully this guide helps you out so if this guide helps, you can press the like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I do have a membership program theme, which you can check out in the description down below. But that's all for me. This is Mr. CA wishing you a good race and I'll see you in the next video.